Hey everyone, welcome to Common Sense, where we're exploring your local businesses. I'm your host, Megan Medic, and today I'm going to show you the ins and outs of a corporation that flies high above the rest, Robinson Helicopter Company. Robinson Helicopter Company is one of the most recognizable names in aircraft production. With worldwide service centers and thousands of satisfied customers, it is hard to believe that this corporation started with one man, one idea, and the stamina to never take no for an answer. My father had an interest in flying since he was young. Uh, when he was in college, he actually learned to fly fixed wing airplanes and decided that uh, he would really be interested in helicopters. Frank Robinson's interest quickly turned into a passion. It led him to work for companies that manufactured helicopters, such as Sensa, Bell, and Hughes Tool Company. While working for these businesses, Robinson designed the small R-22 personal helicopter and pitched the idea to them. But since the Vietnam War was going on, no one wanted to get involved in a production that wasn't military-based. And my father became convinced that if somebody really wanted to just focus on the commercial helicopter industry that there was uh, an opportunity there. So he quit his job and uh, started working out of our house and basically designed the R-22, the two-place helicopter. I uh, quit his job in 73. Uh, the R-22 first flew here on the Torrance Airport in 1975 and we received uh, FAA certification so that we could start production of it in 1979. Since that first flight, Robinson Helicopter Company established a name for itself, filling a market untouched by other aircraft corporations. Obviously our, our market has grown and uh, my father was a, a very firm believer in the Henry Ford concept. In other words, we, we weren't trying to build a Me Too product, something that uh, everybody has it but ours is better for some reason or another. We were actually developing at a price point or in areas that nobody had and to find an, an area that what, what we believed was underserved. And uh, clearly in the helicopter market, because helicopters are so expensive, to find one that was economical and reliable at a much lower price point, um, that, that created a whole new market. And people that weren't using helicopters before could suddenly find them affordable and you know, uh, preferable to do a certain type of job. And we have always kind of followed that philosophy and it has just grown with us over the years. Along with this desire to develop new and unique products, Robinson has continued to hold true to three core values. Staying focused on the pilot, making an aircraft that is fun to fly, making a product that is reliable, and providing a helicopter that is economical. These core values not only help maintain a loyal client base, but it also helps Robinson stay on top in a challenging economy. I think one of the things that we, we always have to remember, and I know people come to us all the time and say, well, geez, like the R-66, it's a $800,000 helicopter, but your nearest competitor is at like $1.4 million or $1.5 million. Why don't you just raise it up to $900,000 or to a million? And again, the reason for that is because you will lose market to a certain market that can afford it at that price, but they can't afford it at $900,000 or a million. Um, so we are opening up new markets. And again, when you look at the R44, which is a $400,000 helicopter, there are certain things that people can do with that helicopter at that price range that they don't want to move up to the R66. And as we've expanded the market, we've done it just by finding, hopefully, a helicopter that can give the performance and what people need at a certain price range. The R22 established a market by becoming the number one trainer in the world. It's what people learn to fly on. Uh, the fact that our, we produced over 11,000 helicopters and we have them everywhere. I mean, there's probably not a, a country or an area where they're not, where they don't exist or where they're not in operation. Um, we have over 400 dealers and service centers around the world. So that mass and now, now that you get that momentum building, somebody who wants to go out and buy a helicopter they're going to stay where they can get access to a local dealer. Robinson exports 70% of their helicopters. This leaves 30% of their business in the U.S., making our country its largest market. 
Most of the big purchasers are Canada, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, and throughout Europe. Helicopters are built and sold to these areas for very different reasons. Some are used by farmers, for sightseeing tours, police, and news choppers. The wide diversity for things helicopters can do has only helped prove their popularity and why they are a necessity for some businesses. To see the acceptance of our helicopters, to see its popularity, um, to see all the people that have learned to fly in the helicopter. Um, I know what my father's dream was and it was nothing compared to what happened and I think it's, it's much better than whatever he, he envisioned. You know, he literally just wanted a small helicopter that he could go out and fly himself and he created an industry and I think um, it's something that he's just incredibly proud of uh, for and, and so are we and now with the baton has been passed on to myself and uh, some other bright engineers and, and uh, other people at the company who have been here for quite a long time and our job is to carry it forward and I, I look forward to that. I think it's a great challenge. All right guys, we have to take a quick break but when Common Sense comes back, we're going on a tour of this 600,000 square foot facility to see exactly how a Robinson helicopter is made. We'll be right back. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. Get out to the forest. Let the kids connect to their roots. It's gonna be so much fun. Yeah! Woohoo! Hey guys, wait up! And discover the wonders of nature with your family. These trees are the key to our way of life. Fresh air. What a glorious morning! Clean water. Woohoo! Endless forest adventure. Yeah! Let's rock this jungle! Yo, this is untapped territory. How amazing! <laughs> Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Michael Adams? Here. Michael Adams? Here. <laughs> Michael Adams. Here! Yeah! Michael Adams. Students who miss 18 days of school in any grade risk falling behind and not graduating. Absences add up. Keep track at boostattendance.org today. Okay, now I am here with Jim Strom. He is the purchasing supervisor. And Jim, what are you going to show me today? Well, I'm going to show you the manufacturing side of things, and then I'm going to show you the final where we assemble it all comes together and where we flight test it. I'm super excited. Let's go. Okay. When you start to assemble a helicopter, you first need to make all of the parts which is exactly what this side of the factory is used for. This facility is absolutely humongous. Tell me, how many machines do you have running in here? It's huge. Well, we're running in, in excess of 90 machines in this facility. Well, probably half of the employment ship is in this building, which is 1,300, so we probably have about 650 people in this side of the building. Um, and in this building, this is basically, this is the manufacturing side of the business. This is where we make all the individual parts that we will use to assemble to make the finished aircraft on the other side. It can take six to eight weeks to make the 3,000 plus parts that go into each helicopter. And Robinson manufactures 80% of them from scratch in-house. This is a laser cutting machine. Okay. Where we actually use a CO2 laser to cut out steel parts. And we can get patterns like this here. You see where we can nest the parts really close together. It's very efficient on material use and um, the setting up and changing. If engineering changes something, we just reprogram it and start running the part again. There's no tooling involved whatsoever. Wow, that's so cool. So it's, a, it's a really efficient machine tool. So is there somebody in there manning this machine? No, no, or it's is all it programmed, all, no. Wow, Nobody's, all computer. It's all computerized. Awesome. And then we move down this way, we do the same thing, but with water. It's called a water jet cutting machine. And what we do is the machine will take water and mix it with a garnet pumice. And so it, what it does is then it shoots out a little tiny spray of about 50,000 PSI and it'll cut up to two inches thick worth of aluminum. So what we'll do is we'll stack aluminum sheets up and we'll cut out the periphery and get different configurations 
It'll drill all the holes out like we have on this skin here. All the holes, all the different cutouts. We can do anything we want with this type of ma machine. It makes it very efficient. And then where does this go on the helicopter? This happens to be, this is a blade skin on the R22. Okay. So this is part of the main rotor blade. Wow. And what we'll do is we'll take this and we'll bond it into the finished uh, rotor blade in a, a clean room. Very cool. These are very lightweight. These are aluminum. This is a, uh, uh, an aluminum aircraft alloy that it's made from. You can find a magnitude of materials in each helicopter, but the weight of the aircraft is extremely important. In order to shed pounds, Robinson uses mainly aluminum, stainless steel, or fiberglass components whenever they can. The final aircraft weighs about 1,500 pounds, which is lighter than most cars. When we have to form aluminum parts in what we call the soft condition, we have to heat treat them to bring the strength of the metal up. So we have a aluminum heat treat furnace, we wire up the parts in these baskets, the basket gets lifted up into the furnace, we heat treat the aluminum to 875 degrees Fahrenheit, we bring it out, we'll quench it, we'll rinse it, and we'll throw it into a 20 minus 20, minus 20 degree freezer. And the reason we do that is we have to, when we heat treat the part, it'll twist on us, and we have to check and straighten it before we let it take the heat treat. So we throw it in the freezer to prevent it from taking the heat treat. And then we straighten them one at a time, and then we let it cool at ambient temperature. We have here, this is an R66 fuselage being assembled. We have this structure that we use to build up around, um, around. so the cabin is built around that. We have all these different frame structures that we use as we're building it up. We keep adding them. You can see these, these door frames here that are used to hold the door jams in place. This is all to keep the aircraft fuselage from what we call cabin drift, so it all, when it's all assembled, it stays in one place. And once the cabin's completely assembled, then we can take the frame structures apart separately, and then we can remove the cabin from, from the entire structure. And it's finally starting to actually look like a helicopter back yes, here. Yes, it is, yes it is. This is actually where it all starts. Once all the parts of the helicopter are made, you move to the other side of the facility where manufacturing and assembly takes place. These guys are working on piston engine aircraft engines. Um, so what we do here, we have to do a lot more to get these ready to go in the aircraft because these are air-cooled engines. So we have to build an entire shroud around the raw engine. This is the engine as we get it from the manufacturer. And then we have to add these cooling shrouds that he's putting on. He's draining preservative oil, and so we're going to replace it with actually operating engine oil when it's done. And so by the time we get done with this, this engine is going to weigh nearly 500 pounds. Wow, that's a lot of weight. It's a is lot of weight. Is that the heaviest thing that's going to be in there? It's the heaviest thing that is going to be in the aircraft, yes. So Megan, what we have here, this is actually a wire harness board. where We're making up the master wire harness for the aircraft. And this board basically helps, it tells the assembler where to run a wire from what point to what point, what connector to put on the end. And then we can do a full continuity check while it's on the board to make sure everything is wired up correctly. Great, so once everything is in its perfect place on the board, you can then remove it and assemble it. Into the and aircraft. Perfect, that's very efficient. Yes. A lot of production and assembly going on, from right. the tiniest little pieces to small painting to wiring. So now we're over here and we're seeing a helicopter actually taking shape. And you guys have three kinds. Let's start with this one right here. Okay, this is our original aircraft that was the first one that we uh, Robinson designed and produced. This is the R-22. It's a two-seater. It's very popular in the training market and in the individual private ownership market. Okay. It's, it's what started it all. Okay, and it is in this area because it's going through final assembly phase? This is final assembly phase for it right now. And once it gets done here, we'll go over, it'll get painted, and then from there it'll go into flight test. It's looking pretty good. Yep, it is. I'm very proud of this little guy. Here is they've just installed this engine and now they're completing all the upper drive train. You can see the sheave that was being assembled. He was wiring up over an engine. Now it's there and he's, they're attaching it to the upper drive to drive the power into the main rotor gearbox which we saw being assembled in sub-assembly. So that's what they're doing right now. That is so cool seeing it all separate and now it's coming together and really, really taking shape. It typically takes about 12 weeks for the chopper to go down the assembly line. Robinson is completing roughly eight helicopters a week. 
one R22, five R44s, and two R66s. These are from an assembly standpoint, these are done. But now they're in here and they have to go through what we call flight testing. Okay. So that each aircraft has to have a minimum of four hours of flight time on them. But they'll probably spend a week in this hangar going through all the different checks and balances that we have to do to get the aircraft ready. Because they have to check all the systems, electrical, power plant, avionics, flight instruments, electrical, all that has to be done during this time. So they have about a week to get that all done. And how much of that can be done on the ground in this hangar versus in the air? Majority of it is done on the ground and then we check it by flying it. Okay. And so we, but we can usually get all that checked and done and flown in those four hours. Absolutely. All right, want to show me your favorite one that's pretty finished up here? Well, I like the blue myself. I think that's a, a nice looking aircraft. It, it doesn't have all the parts on it right now, all the, the fairings on it, but I'd really like the color of that aircraft. And that's an R66, that's our, our, uh, our top end aircraft. The typical lifespan of a helicopter is 12 years or 2,200 hours of flight time. All right guys, now that we know how these choppers are made, it's time to see how they fly. We take off when we come back. <laughs> to Maddie, congrats on paying off all those student loans. Finally, right? How'd you manage that anyway? I started tracking my spending, changed a couple of habits. Wow. I'm kind of living paycheck to paycheck right now. <laughs> I don't even know how I'm doing it. Well, have you tried saving a little? <laughs> I want to, but where's that money going to come from? <laughs> Bill collectors, they're the worst. Am I right? When it comes to financial <laughs> stability, don't get left behind. Not Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. Hi, I'm Misty Mae Trainer, And I'm Carrie Walsh of the 2008 U.S. Olympic Beach Volleyball Team. We're here with our friends, 321 Penguins, to say, Eat, eat well, well and play, play hard. hard. I notice you're both rather tall. What do you have to eat to grow up to be that big? I eat lots of fruits and vegetables. And my favorite snack is a banana because it gives me all the energy I need before a big match. Eat well, play, well, play hard, and, and make, make it balance. balance. For fun ways to get healthy, visit www.smallstats.gov. With our seatbelts fastened and our headsets on, there was officially no turning back. And up, up, and away we went to explore our city from a whole different angle. Our pilot, Doug Tompkins, has 30 plus years of flying experience and is quickly able to calm the nerves of a much less experienced flyer, such as myself. I can literally see all of Los Angeles. This is so cool. With a light breeze and a crystal clear view of the city, it proves why Torrance is the perfect place for Robinson to call home. Came down here to the Torrance Airport and, and had a little hangar here where we built the helicopter. But there was a, there's a lot of good things about Torrance and Los Angeles um, over the years that we've really come to appreciate. Uh, one of which is you have access to uh, a lot of different um, types of manufacturing processes. You can get anything done in LA, CAD plating, honing, machining. Uh, you have access to all sorts of materials, things that if you were out in the middle of nowhere that you wouldn't have access to. You also had um, a very diversified workforce and you have to remember, especially in the 80s and 90s, there was a lot of aerospace, a lot of uh, very easy to get uh, AMP mechanics, to get technicians, uh, mill operators, that sort of thing. Um, and then you have access to the, to the ports and to LAX. So we, we ship a lot of our product outside the United States, so having access to that type of transportation was uh, extremely important. And then finally, probably one of the biggest reasons, is you have the weather here. And obviously, if you build helicopters, you need to fly them. And we love the weather, and it's been uh, one of the reasons why we've uh, liked staying here. And the community is happy to have Robinson around. Despite the thousands of jobs and professional training experience they provide, Robinson also supports local cultural arts programs and is a proud sponsor of the STEM program. 
This supports the teaching of science, technology, engineering, and math in the school system. They have also received a countless number of awards over the years for community involvement, such as the Torrance Advantage Award. Awards are for when you get older, right? We're very, very pleased to be recognized um, for our involvement with the community. Uh, but it's, I don't know, it's not so much about the awards as, as just trying to, uh, to be a good neighbor and to, uh, to, to help out the community in the areas and stuff. Uh, my father has uh, won just about every award you can name in the, um, in the aviation and engineering um, field. And uh, we're incredibly proud of that, uh, all the different ones. But if you ask him what he's the most proud of, he'll probably point to the two aircraft that we have in the Smithsonian. We have the R-22 that was the original one we got certified that got us started with. And then we have the R-44 that Jennifer Murray flew around the world twice actually and, and uh, became the first woman to fly around the world in a helicopter. Um, that one is also in the Smithsonian. And that's kind of an achievement not only for the, of, of the engineering but just of the spirit of what we produce and the people that fly our products. Right now Pilot Tompkins, his favorite part of flying a Robinson helicopter is the freedom you feel when up in the air. This is one of the big differences between flying and owning a helicopter versus a private plane. They're two totally different animals in one sense. If, if I wanted to go from here to Florida and I didn't have a lot of time, um, the airplanes fly much faster. They fly, you know, uh, two, three, four hundred, five hundred miles an hour. Uh, so they, they can get there very quickly. Whereas a helicopter, uh, pretty much the top speed is, is around, say, 140, maybe 150 miles an hour. So you're not going to, you know, going long distances, you don't go as far. But a helicopter, uh, the visibility is fantastic. You can obviously hover, so you can see anything. You can back up. You can go over areas, so you have a lot more versatility. So on a short area where you want to really look and see and do a lot of things, you know, then a helicopter is really uh, is the way to go. Simply from being up here above the big city, it is easy to agree that the experience a helicopter ride can bring is unlike any other. Oh my gosh, that was unbelievable and definitely the best view of Torrance that you could get. Thank you so much for tuning into Common Sense, where we take a behind the scenes look at your local businesses and explore the secrets to their success. I'm your host, Megan Medic. We'll see you next time. If you know of another local business you would like to see featured on our show, please send an email to commonsense at torrentsca.gov. We look forward to seeing you next time.